Okay, so welcome everyone. We're excited to talk about waste reduction by sharing some of our team's experiences participating in a home waste audit, as well as a few tips. I'm joined, I'm Susan, and I'm joined by Zoe, Chelsea, and Emily from our team, who you will get to meet very soon. And as the program lead for volunteer engagement and community programs with the University of Toronto team, I'm also one of the co-founders and I spent about 10 years working for the Great Canadian Shoreline Cleanup. And I wanted to share that I'm a fan of jigsaw puzzles. And the reason I share that is because it's a fun example um, of how you can reduce waste. I'm part of a swap group. So instead of buying new puzzles, I often borrow and loan them out to new people that I've met. Um, so before you meet our panel, a bit more about our team, we're a science-based community outreach group made up of local volunteers, students, and early career researchers to increase waste literacy and reduce plastic pollution. We formed in 2017, and today is actually our fifth birthday, so happy birthday. <laughs> and in the work that we do, we have many areas to contribute to positive change. We have programs in the community like today's talk, uh, visiting grade five classrooms, and data-driven research that explores plastic um, pollution solutions. And here's our um, theory of change that one of our volunteers helped us create, which depicts visually how we work and what we accomplish. And you can see that with the raindrop, scientific evidence provides the foundation of our work through our three work streams of research, outreach, and education. And we work locally to build um, capacity globally to reduce plastic pollution. And we cannot do this without the work and energy of our volunteers who are here tonight. Um, to talk about a home waste audit. So I would, just wanted to introduce what that is. Um, I'm just making sure everything's still working. Okay, so we do a home waste audit. It's what we consider a community science program. And we do that with the public every, every January. And during this time, you will track your household waste and keep account of what you throw away and categorize them by their material type for both landfill and recycling. And I wanted to highlight some of our recent results because they're really, really positive. And in this graph, you can see from our 16 households who participated, the average um, waste items per week. The top line is both combined and the lo lower two lines, the black one is recycling and the bottom line, sorry, the bottom line is recycling in blue and we've got landfill in the middle in black. But if you look at all three, you can see a downward trend. So that meant both landfill and recycling decreased across the four weeks of the home waste audit. And in a bigger perspective, we calculated over the span of a year, all of these small changes could equate to almost 16,000 less items sent to landfill. Um, each week, the 16 participating households had about 20 less um, items generated. So it just goes to show if you've ever had that concern that your small difference, small changes won't amount to a big difference, but it really does if you think about just these 16 households, the change that could happen, what would happen if a community or even a whole country made similar changes. So if you wanted to do one on your own, um, these are the key steps. And if you go to our website on our home waste audit page, you can find full instructions. Uh, but the first step is just to get that motivation and a pen and paper, set aside a time to do the home waste audit, four weeks is ideal. And then using our instructions, you can track your waste weekly. Um, so, I'll turn it over to our panelists shortly to talk a little bit about their experience and then I have some questions prepared. Um, but I know that Nadine wants to, um, has um, something to share first. So I'll stop sharing my screen for that. And hopefully her internet's still working. <laughs> uh, can you hear me okay? Can hear you, yeah. Okay, sweet. Um, so I've got some raffle prizes. We have two lovely students, Mira and Claire. Claire is one of, is a work study student, but that they're both going to be here and have this conversation. I'm gonna. I don't know that Claire can hear us, unfortunately. So, um, I'm going to provide both with prizes, both Mira and Claire for. Um, back to you oh um i might be frozen now <laughs> can everyone not there we go um it's funny on my big screen i could see i was frozen but i was my smaller we're all good i'll share the screen again uh, 
with the snow today maybe it's impacting things. Okay. So we'll start with Zoe and I will keep the chat open um, in case anything, any, if everyone can hear me and can confirm. Um, Zoe, you can get started when you're ready. Okay, so hi, I'm Zoe and I'm a fourth year undergrad at U of T in the downtown campus and I was born and raised in Malaysia and came here for U of T. And I'm relatively new to the trash team and on the next slide I'll mention how I got involved in the home waste audit. So it started kind of in December last year. I applied and I got accepted to an internship called Ocean Uprise. So it's targeted at youth and educating us on how to approach like environmental activism. And the, one of the first tasks was to see what was being done in our community already. So I turned to U of T and I like, I've always heard about the trash team but I never really looked into it. And then uh, the home waste audit, it was a good starting point, I think, to get involved with the trash team and learn a bit more about my waste habits. And personally, I also enjoyed, because I'm in material science, so I enjoyed looking at different materials. And so when I was separating my waste and figuring out, oh, if something's a mixed material, it still has to like go in the trash instead of being able to be recycled. And next slide, please. And these were some of the highlights that I had during the home waste audit. So on the left, we have just kind of my weekly grocery shop and it's not perfect, but I tried to reduce things, especially like when I was uh, like later on, I'll mention the Toronto Waste Wizard um, website that was kind of like my best friend throughout the whole thing. Every time I wasn't sure what category it would go into and like I find, I found out small things like how foil chip bags aren't recyclable, but when they're soft plastic, it's like more likely that they will be. And in the middle, um, this was one experience. I was really grateful that early on in the home waste audit, like the second week I met Lisa, who I think she recently also just got her PhD and she studies microplastics. And she's actually like in Antarctica right now, which is or on the way. And that's really cool, but I got to meet her and her partner, Brendan. And one really cool thing that kind of helped like frame the home waste audit in a very positive way was that when we were out there, we were far from the shore and the island. So we didn't have snacks and I didn't bring um, packaged snacks because Lisa offered us like homemade snacks in reusable containers. And I thought that was really nice to remind me when I go out with my friends to bring stuff instead of relying on purchasing and creating a lot of waste. And finally, I have a few tips if you do wanna get started on your own home waste audit. And I don't know if this is like copyrighted by Stephen Covey, but he says like to start with the end in mind. So always now when, like if I go to a grocery store, I'll think about all the plastic that's involved and not just like how it ended up on the shelf. So like the whole life cycle of an item instead of just thinking oh it's convenient for me right now but there was like a whole process behind it and also refusing plastic and like I mentioned the Toronto Waste Wizard has been a great help and also to keep the conversation going so during the home waste audit I posted about it on my social media and I think like a few of my friends replied to it saying like oh didn't you know these like very basic recycling things and like I explained like how I grew up somewhere else and we didn't have like recycling infrastructure in place so just like talking about it with your friends and the people around you and to make sure everyone's aware of things we might not know and also to invest in quality reusables like I've been recently using a cutlery camping set that my mom's had and yesterday she told me it's actually from 30 years ago so it's been used much longer than single-use things and Hopefully everyone can have their own set when they go out and reduce waste. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much, Zoe. We'll have time to ask you a few questions. Um, I'll now introduce uh, Chelsea to share a bit more about her experiences. Hi everyone, I'm Chelsea and I'm a first year social science student at U of T and I'm currently in choosing my majors and programs. So I'm hoping to major in international relations 
uh, minoring in sociology and East Asian studies. I have a few fun facts about me. So first of all, I have a dog named Wang Wang who has a really bad temper, but the cutest face. So you can see in the picture right here, he is literally the cutest, but I sometimes I really hate him. And my mom also had all problems with his temper before, but we still love him in general. <laughs> yes. Um, second, I have the same birthday as Harry Potter. I'm July 31st, so I sometimes always call myself the chosen one, and I've joked about it so much with my par parents and my family members. Um, it, it never gets old, but yeah. Um, and then lastly, my older sister's birthday is July 30th, not in the same year, while my cousins, one of my really close cousins, is August 1st year, first, also not in the same year. Um, that means my family was always in pain trying to actually celebrate our birthdays. It always ends up being like one big cake or like three of us having three little small cakes. And so that's just like something fun about me. And um, I'm really glad to be able to share this with someone. I always tell someone about these. Um, but some, um, but I'm going to go on to the next one. Why joining the Home Waste Audit? So two reasons for maybe joining. First of all is out of curiosity. I grew up in a really big household as um, as a, a small kid and my mom has always been um, talking about how much waste we make as an entire family unit and then so from this I was just really interested to see how much waste I actually make over um, four weeks times and so it's just gen general curiosity that got to me that made me want to join. And second of all, I want to be more conscious about my behaviors. And then in turn, I want to change my behaviors based on it. Um, and then, so yeah, some highlights I have in um, during this program. First of all, my living space is at Campus One, which is kind of a student residence. It's a board, four bedroom suite with a common kitchen. And so that means I get both ends, I, ha I have a dining hall, but at the same time, I can go get my own groceries and make my own food. Some things I have been doing during um, this period of time is bringing my own bag to grocery stores. And so you don't have to use plastic bags for produce or um, just in general bagging your items anymore. Um, and then so you can see on the, uh, the picture here, I have a really big tote bag and I just bring anytime if I need to go grocery shopping. And secondly, I've learned something really, I've learned something valuable, which is just constantly evaluate the necessity of online ordering. So like basically picking up my clothing orders versus shipping or delivery. And if you, if you remember the last slide, I actually amounted a really big amount of recycling um, because of my online ordering habits. And so I've been constantly evaluating the necessity of it. And in turn, it actually reduced a lot of waste. And in the end, I have some little things in life, such as constantly going to the dining hall so you can use reusable cutlery. You can um, email your receipts at Shoppers Drug Mart instead of printing them. You can like do your own, like bring it, do your own coffee instead of going to coffee shops. And I have shopped at a sustainable shop which uses um, these very recyclable uh, bags, paper bags to bag their items, which I found really interesting because in the end, it doesn't reduce the quality of anything. It actually helped me find like recycle things better. And so these are some just highlights and some things I find really fun um, in during my time at home waste audit. Okay. Thank you so much, Chelsea. We'll hear ask you some more questions shortly. Uh, we'll hear from Emily now before we um, go into our panel of questions. I feel like I'm thinking of all these questions for everyone as we go through. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Emily. Um, I'm new to the trash team and to the trash team staff and very excited about it. Um, so I come to you as a visual artist, but I'm now also taking on a role as the art and visual communication specialist for the trash team. So coming up with some new and exciting projects um, for you to be involved with and stay tuned for that. Um, and just to briefly speak about my artistic practice, um, it is based in waste materials. So I've done things like I lived in Scotland for a period of time and did a residency where I went and lived in the north of Scotland. And I basically approached a farmer and said, hey, do you have a bunch of wool that I might be able to just take off your hands? And he dumped a giant vat of wool in one of those like polypropylene bags out a barn window and into my in front of my car into a mud puddle. And that, so I had pounds of wool and I've done many things like that. Also using dumps um, as potential material collection sites and most recently plants have been a big, a big factor in my practice, um, which has led me to the trash team and to the lab and to interest in working with uh, 
collected microplastics from the sea bins, as well as the plants that filter those microplastics. So I will be doing an installation, um, hopefully on the waterfront next summer. And that's in the works right now. Um, but before that, I'm just trying to rush through my bio here. I also lived in Dawson City in the Yukon, uh, which is very far north in the subarctic of Canada. And that's a place that I developed my love of garbage and reusables because it's a place where all your garbage gets and recycling gets either pushed into kind of a community made landfill or shipped south. So I there's a lot of initiatives to reuse and reduce and people put out their waste uh, for others to collect and make new. So that was a big, big resource for me as an artist and as a living person. Um, and I'm ready for the next slide. Yeah, so why I participated in the home waste audit, I was really curious just to see how much I produced uh, as an individual, and obviously with my puppy, um, because I think I was sort of smug about my, my garbage and recycling production, um, but I still found that I produced a lot more than I expected, and that over the course of the waste audit, I was able to reduce further, which made me more smug. Um, yeah, no, but to learn what's available to me at the local level was really inspiring. And um, I think Zoe mentioned the Waste Wizard was super helpful, um, but also to kind of walk around my neighborhood and see what was available to me um, from places like the Nut House, which is a bulk food store, um, to the re uh, refillery nearby, uh, where you can replace your soaps and, and dispensers. I can't remember the name of it, but I'll send it all along later. Um, it's in the junction. Um, and just to also to shift my habits, I think Chelsea Rockman, she said something about habits recently, and it really stuck with me that, especially in the pandemic, we have to think about our habits and kind of shift them. And uh, that's something that's been resonating for me. And I think the home waste audit was a really good way to kind of assess my habits and, and check them. And definitely this practice really helped me with that from just sort of touching every single piece of waste in my household and going, is this necessary? And yeah, like you said, Chelsea, about online ordering, that's definitely a habit that I have been trying to break as well um, in this time. Yeah, ready for the next uh, slide. So yeah, um, highlights. Um, yeah, like I said before, just learning about my plastic footprint was really interesting. And I did seek out Rachel Salt's books from the library. And if you don't know her, She's an awesome author and scientist as well, I believe. Um, and she basically has two different books, which I guess I list on the next slide, but one is The Plastic Problem um, and the other is Understanding Our Plastic Footprint. And one is a bit more geared towards kids and the other towards the general public. But one of the top tips that she lists is um, engaging in a, in a waste audit, a home waste audit. So proud of us for doing that. And yeah, I found that to be really inspiring to sort of be reading about it as I as I did the audit to kind of solidify what I was learning. Um, and like I said before, just taking that time to physically consider each piece of garbage, I guess because I'm such a visual person, it really helped to kind of ingrain the necessity of shrinking down and not just recycling, but just not producing anything as much as I could. So yeah, and, and then, yeah, thinking about what's available to me right out my door, not driving anywhere, but just walking along the street and seeing uh, what different resources I can use. I've always been an avid secondhand shopper um, and love it, love to make different clothing for myself and alter things and reimagine different possibilities, but even cutting down further and not doing that and just considering, do I even need this item? Is this necessary for my life? Can I live without this and, or making it myself? Yeah, I think that's me. And uh, here's a slide of the plastic problem and of your plastic footprint. And I highly recommend these books and also using your public library, a wonderful resource uh, that I love. And there's no late fees right now. So you can <laughs> keep it forever. No, just kidding. <laughs> that's me. Thank you each so much. Okay, so I'm just gonna, I have a series of questions for everyone, um, but I wanted to check in with Nadine in case you wanted to pop in with any um, thing or if we are good to continue on into the panel. Let's continue on into the panel, absolutely. Okay, great. So um, our first question is um, for each of you and we'll start with uh, Chelsea. I'm just curious, so the same question for each of you is what were you most excited to learn about, um, um, Chelsea? 
Yeah, so as I, as I said in my introduction that I was very curious about how much waste I actually made. And I was also uh, very interested to learn how in a way I can also change my habits. Um, but I think the most exciting thing that actually got me was just uh, in general, I could just sit down and really just take my time and see what's happening with my waste habit and behaviors. Um, okay, um, so Zoe, I'm curious, and then Emily, what you were most interested to learn from the home waste audit? I think for me, it was because uh, like with my internship, we focused on the water waste, so the end or the end for like most things or to that plastics that get accumulated in water. So it was interesting to look at all the different materials and think about how everything is not just like one item, like, well, like on, in a beer bottle, there's the glass, there's the cap that has plastic and metal. And so I found that really interesting to learn more about the materials. Right, that makes sense. Um, and Emily, how about you? Yeah, a similar answer to Chelsea. I just in sort of, understanding my own habits and it's easy to point the finger at other people and sort of be like oh I can't believe they didn't put that in the recycling or look at how wasteful they are but really to kind of turn it inward and think about what it is that I could do to be better and and how and I think that was really helpful that way yeah it's true a lot of people who tend to do the waste audit are already practicing some of these types of behaviors at home so I'm curious um Chelsea and a few others about your experience before you did the home waste audit um Chelsea, in your case, were there any things you were already doing in terms of um, waste reduction? Yeah, I was actually doing a lot of the things um, I mentioned. So first of all, like bring your own bags to grocery. I find that really just in, just convenient in general senses. And also like they started charging for plastic bags. And sometimes for my financial need, it's actually a very nice way to um, cut down on it. And I've also been buying my own coffee I'm not like exactly a coffee connoisseur so I don't really like care about the taste of my coffee so I buy instant coffee and for some people they're like no instant coffee is a no but for me it's 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 great <laughs> it's great um and then yeah and then also I have like every time I move I will buy a set of like reusable cutleries because the plastic ones are just really um sometimes if you throw them away and then you won't be able to use it anymore and it's just a waste and um, sometimes just reusing them and reusing cutleries are just so much more convenient for um, people who just live at home, sometimes just stay at home and don't go out to eat or anything like that. Yeah, and so that's some general senses I've been practicing and it's just really convenient for me. Yeah, um, and on that note, I know, um, Zoe, that you likely do some similar um, behaviors. One of the things we ask everyone who's doing a home waste audit is to estimate what they're already doing before you start counting it and what was that like for you coming to what was that experience like of thinking of an estimate how do you put a number to it yeah initially I don't know if everyone's seen but sometimes on YouTube they have like people trying to quantify their waste by just putting all their waste in like a small jar mm -hmm. and initially I was like oh I don't make that much waste and then once the home waste audit started and I found it was interesting to like especially like toilet paper rolls like instead of just counting it and then putting it into the recycling right away, I would kind of collect them for a bit. And just that visual of like, oh, there's a small tiny pile. It's like if something changes and you're like, oh, actually I do need to think about reduction. And so initially I was like, oh, it was, I thought I would just fine, but it did reduce over the week. It's true. You often see that visual of the, your waste in a week in that nice cute little mason jar. <laughs> so that is an image you must kind of start off with. Um, I'm going to go to um, both Zoe and Emily next because you both grew up, um, well not in one case grew up and have lived outside of Toronto and waste management can differ where you live. Um, I'm curious, Emily in the Yukon, what were kind of some similarities and differences that you've noticed between there and, Tor and Toronto? You spoke a bit already about some. Couldn't help to mention it a little bit, but yeah, it, yeah, I mean the differences were, I mean so in some ways it's similar in that much of our waste is also shipped out um, here that we don't see and that we kind of don't want to recognize. But there it's a real extreme where there is no recycling services. However, we do have this incredible volunteer run recycling depot in the, in the town and it's a town of 1500 people. Um, and that center was a really great way to interact with your recycling because there is no garbage or recycling collection. Um, so you'd go there 
and you would sort, you know, your hard plastics and your plastic film. And there was these big containers that had them all and then they'd be shipped after that. So you'd have the signs there and you'd be like, okay, there's my milk carton. And so it kind of gave that sorting model um, similar to the audit. Yeah. And then I think online ordering again, I know it's been said, but we did a lot of that there. There's only two grocery stores and uh, they had a, an excellent selection given where we were, but you know, it's nice to get other things sometimes. And so certainly we rely on that uh, when living there. Yeah. It's interesting you mentioned the swapping group, I believe in um, Zoe had talked about her experience on the island. The island has a little community shop like that. So they're not in the same scale, but there are a, a few of those here in Toronto. And um, you were the one who let me know, but I'd never heard about the Stooping Toronto group, which is another neat initiative that I'm now following. Um, Zoe, I'd love to hear about what the experience was like growing up in Malaysia and if anything um, has since growing up, what the differences were and how things are there now, if you're aware of anything. Yeah, so like similar, well, a little bit like in the Yukon, we had sort of recycling depots in the city. So we don't have, we don't have like blue bins or compost bins that get picked up until like most recently, a few weeks ago, my parents told me that our area where I grew up, we, they're trying to pilot a program. So they'll like see and gauge the interest and if people do recycle because what we used to do is we every two three weeks we bring all back then like my parents would always buy plastic water bottles so like we bring all the water bottles all the newspapers and we bring it to the depot and then you get money in exchange for it and yeah I think overall it was not to say recycling culture isn't big in Malaysia, but it's slowly catching on and hopefully like people do realize that they should be re using reusables instead of one-time use items, but yeah. slowly. Well, one of the key steps of the home waste audit is everyone's asked to look at the waste management in their area and learn more about where things go. Um, Chelsea, when it came time for you to do that, was there anything new that you learned that you weren't aware of in terms of where what bin? versus recycling garbage etc yeah so in general like um the green bin um blue bin and also like just garbage i was pretty familiar with but then so uh when i was asked to go research a bit more of it i found out that i have been doing some recycling maybe recycling wrong for example like um some uh coffee cups that are wax uh, and there are waxed inside that those don't go into recycling because they're considered as uh, garbage. And also I found out popsicle sticks were also not recyclable. That absolutely shocked me because I've always put it in the recycling bin and now I'm just kind of like, oh no, <laughs> I, I feel like a bad person for doing this. And then, but like, but then it's a learning curve for me also. And so, um, and then another thing, I think one important thing is just in general recycling needs to be clean like kept on kept clean in general and so like pizza boxes that are soiled with oil and takeout boxes in especially they cannot go into recycle because there's a risk of contaminations and I think that's one thing that I really learned from it and that kind of really shocked me and I have shared it with my family members and they expressed the same shock um, but I'm glad I actually went on and researched a bit more about these yeah. Uh, so Zoe, with your background in um, studies as a material scientist, did that, you mentioned it a little bit in your introduction, like specifically, how did that come in handy for you as you were looking at the this in relation to where they go in the bin? Yeah, it's like, also, when I tell people, like, I study material science, they're like, what's that? So yeah. it's like, uh, it was interesting to focus on all the macroscopic things, because usually in what I've been studying is all under the microscope, but all the tiny building blocks make all these bigger materials. And it was fun to see how, like I recently started like my own Instagram page on documenting these materials and not just focusing on materials that could end up in our waters, but also alternatives that we could think about. Cause I think that's where the materials industry in general is moving and more natural and biodegradable things. And so I think it was, it's been a good uh, starting point in what I want to do with my materials journey. That's amazing. Um, I'm actually, that just made me think of a question in terms of materials, because Emily, um, the 
art that you do is very materials based. Um, so as you were doing the waste audit and you're looking through items to kind of get your mind thinking any anything in terms of art as to, oh, this makes me want to do this project or, you know, I'm, I don't have a direct question, but I'm just curious in terms of your creative brain and going through this the waste as you work on art. That's a great question. Yeah, I feel like the main thing I thought was how could I just break this down myself and make a new composite? I feel like Zoe's the person to talk to. I was like, I'm so, so pleased. I've found my way around all of these scientists so I can ask them all the questions that I need answered to keep my practice going. But yeah, I think figuring out other ways of, of breaking down some of these, these like non-breakdownable materials, to put it crudely, um, would be sort of my dream because I'm always trying to make something small so I can build it back up again, if that makes sense. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you would share some of the resources that you were using, um, Emily, the, the books, um, and as well, I think everyone or most everyone has mentioned the Toronto Waste Wizard, but I'm curious from the books that you're reading that Rachel did, was there any um, standout advice there that, in addition to like recommending people check the books out, um, like what was the main learnings from them? I feel like, yeah, I mean, I mentioned the, that she mentions doing a waste audit. A lot of the things that the trash team are doing directly reference, which like, I feel like there's so much overlap in, in what the team is doing, which was really affirming and exciting to me. Um, but I think just for me, like learning about um, the Pacific, you know, the Pacific, the garbage patch that exists, but also that it's in all of our waterways and that it's not just in this one area. And kind of, uh, and also learning about the history of plastic and and where it came from, and that it's not sort of all bad. I think that that which is a trash team philosophy as well. That it's not that we don't need to sort of there are uses for it as well. But it's that kind of excess uh, that's problematic, and and what to do with it, uh, what to do with that excess. Yeah. yeah, and it's kind of about that note about plastics too. It's you know people can be very anti-plastic, but it's how about you? navigate like what's that balance between these materials and how often you're using them there's a lot of good you know as we've seen in the past few years the medical practice the plastic is pretty crucial there to help yes. care. so you know it definitely has a value it's just about how we use them and develop them further um it leads me actually to a question for chelsea um you had mentioned like with um some of the challenges you face you were talking about like online ordering was something you can do um, figure out like when you need something or not. I'm curious if you could just speak a little bit more about your tips for um, approaching that. Yeah, for that, I'm actually still struggling a lot with it. And then so just like before this, even before this panel, I was always, I had always these impulses to buy. And I think especially with like COVID now, everybody is just cooped up inside their houses. And so online ordering became like really in general essential for everyone's like daily lives. But then I think it's not like to criticize it and indeed it, there is a balance to it. And so there's no like point in tipping the scale for one thing to dominate the other. And so I think my advice would be just to think before you act upon it. And so like when you're going, when you're shopping, you're shopping online and you're just like, oh, this, these clothes look nice. But then you saw that you can pick it up at Eaton Center. Why don't you just like maybe take the TTC, take the bus and then or walk there if you're within walking ranges. And so just thinking about the alternatives and also looking at shops, like I mentioned that there were sustainability shops out there that offer really um, pack, less packing. And if you go to most stores now, they actually would like to support more sustainable actions. And my friend have also told me that in labs, um, they're, they have also been advocating for less plastics to be used in labs. And so it's always just that idea of consciousness and like thinking before you act upon it. And then so that's what in the end reduces. And I think another important thing to know is that you can't you can't think of yourself as the bad person in this in these situations. Don't think of like you're 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 doomed or like you're really bad for just ordering once or twice because it's a necessity and everyone is not is like everyone is trying to learn to live without it but it's frankly pretty impossible I would say um, and so it's just to pump yourself up basically first of all in, um, in maintaining a conscious action and also to be consistent with how you um, act around sustainability as a topic and then when you go out you'll be more conscious about it bring your own bags use more 
reusable cutleries. And then in the end, there's a consistency and then you can influence everyone around you and in the end, achieving this um, great balance. And so it's not an easy task, but everyone can achieve it by just being consistent and don't hate yourself for it. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Um, Zoe, I just wanted to learn a little bit more about you at Face, the social social gatherings, now that that's going to be starting up, it has already, um, as you had had your lovely experience out on the island skating with homemade treats. Um, are there any elements of that that now you plan to carry forward as you meet up with your own friends more and more? Yeah, definitely. Like, uh, a good example would be yesterday when it was pie day and on campus they yep. had pies being sold. And I, they asked if I wanted cutlery so it's like small things right and then I was like yes and but then they handed me a plastic fork and knife wrapped in plastic with the napkin and it's like you kind of want just the napkin but at the same time like my friend that was with me also needed cutlery but I always bring like a one set like a, a fork and a spoon so I, I didn't like force my friend to not use their plastic cutlery but like I offered them to use mine instead and even yeah just going forward even right before actually going to the island that morning it was really cold it was like six negative 16 and um like right before I got on the ferry I texted my friends asking if they wanted hot drinks and it never like before the home waste audit and before like meeting Lisa it was like a no-brainer like if you're cold get a hot drink no matter what the convenience costs but after that now I bring my thermos when I know it's going to be cold and just small changes and encouraging everyone around me to do the same. Yeah, and the good news is coffee shops are um, more <laughs> accepting of these as they were, you know, a no-brainer before, but now it's, you can start bringing them again and asking them to be filled instead of the paper one. Um, I'm, I'm noticing the time and want to leave if, if Nadine or anyone else had any questions. So I'll just ask each of you um, to share, um, like what is your advice to others if they want to reduce waste? whether that's at home or just in general. Um, we'll start with uh, Emily, then Chelsea, then Zoe. Um, I think, well, I think Chelsea had a really good point about kind of like stopping and thinking b before you make that purchase. Like, I think it's about thought, I think thoughtfulness is a big part of it. And Zoe, you also touched on that with, with bringing hot drinks. Like, I just think these decisions we make, obviously some of it is you know, it's not that we have to switch to all organic or, you know, there's costs there and things like that, but it's these kinds of small choices that you can implement. And so that's definitely something that I've taken away from it and that I think others could as well. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just going to catch up on that. Um, I think both Emily and also Zoe had great points about also how to treat people around you when, um, when you deal with sustainability. Don't force other people into um, doing the same practices as you because everyone has different tolerance and also have different situations for how they can uh, be able to be sustainable. And instead just offer them um, maybe like, yeah, like a grocery bag, like your cutleries and um, just sometimes teach them about these little tricks in life. And then if they can accept it, they can be, they can be consistent with that behavior. Then it's also something to be cheerful about. And so it's celebrating those changes and also being really, um acceptance like accept uh as acceptance towards others great Zoe yeah similar to how Chelsea and Emily started out wanting to learn more about their habits and I found it's been a good way and I think anyone who I told my friend about the home waste audit but I'll probably explain in a more intimate setting with them just explaining how they can go about going and starting their own home waste audit, but it can be as small or as grand as you want. And like last year I went vegan for a while and like, I didn't go cold, <laughs> cold turkey. Go, I didn't go cold turkey right away. It was like, you understand, like you want to take these small steps. It doesn't mean you have to get rid of every animal product in your pantry. You can do it slowly and you can keep what works and what doesn't. And yeah. That's great. And I think back to the um, stats that one of our other members who looked the results put together about the, the landfill and the number of items just from these 16 households that seemed like probably individually might, well, you see, see the change, but it might feel like these small changes, how do they all add up? But then you can see in the numbers they do. Um, so that's great advice. Um, 
curious, uh, Nadine, if you had any questions you wanted to ask before we wrap up. I do have a question. Yeah. I was so, uh, Zoe kind of just answered it. Oh, okay. I just got my, because my, can you hear me okay? I got a notice on my internet connection. Okay. Um, I would love to know if friends and family were really curious about the home we saw it and what those conversations were like. Were they kind of like, what are you doing? What's happening here? What was your experience with your friends and family as they noticed that you're you're kind of holding on to your waist and writing things out. Like, what was that experience like? And others feel free to add in, like if you had roommates or friends who are <laughs> noticing this as well. Yeah, for me. So first of all, I had a, like a lot of friends over sometimes for studying and stuff. And um, it was just one of those days where I was counting my trash. I was laying out on the floor and then she was just like looking at me and just like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm counting my trash. <laughs> and then she she kind of looked at me in awe, but then I explained to her what I was doing. And so she kind of get it. We actually got into a pretty like, um, you can say like kind of sad conversation about how the world is going because um my sociology course also offers a lot of these um, ideas of how sustainability is affecting us and how climate change also. But then I'm really happy that my friend was able to actually listen to me in the conversation. She actually added on a lot of great points and she was also very interested in trash team in general. And then so I was really happy, but it didn't go off in a, a really funny beginning. Just I, I still remember her looking at me, just dumping the trash on the floor. And she was just like, what? <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> I tried to get my mom to do it as well, but she's actually like a true pro when it comes to waste management. Like my parents have, a, a you know, in their bathroom for their garbage, they have a separate bin already for anything that's compostable like she's complete she saves all her containers like she just has has this intrinsic well I guess she grew up that way and and is really exceptional so I think she's she was even more smug than me she was just like I'll watch you do it but and if I had a question I would ask her and she knew it was incredible so yeah um so I actually I thought of another question um my last question for everyone, and then I'll turn it back over to Nadine, um, is from everything that you've learned, is there any, and it's okay if you ha might have the same answer, is there anything that you haven't started yet, but you're looking, we want to start trying to incorporate in terms of waste reduction? For me, one thing I noticed was, like, I drink a lot of soy milk, and like, I know we recycle the cartons, but then I also think about like the plastic caps. And one thing I want to try is making my own soy milk. It looks like it's very rewarding. And when you serve it like hot and fresh, like I think in Taiwan. Yeah. Cool. How about, how about you, Chelsea? Uh, yeah, I actually got, um, I was thinking of one from um, you and Su Susan, you and Chelsea Rockman, Miss Ra Rockman, the other day, you guys were having a conversation about compost um, piles in the fridge. Um, that actually really interested me a lot because, like, for some reasons, like these buildings, um, the uh, apartment buildings, especially their organic shoots always like always breaks for some reasons. I have to put it down the garbage chute, which, like, in general, I don't really like the idea of it. And so maybe starting a compost pile like in the fridge um, would be really nice. And so I might want to try that next time. Yes, and to clarify, the freezer is the freezer, not the fridge. Oh, it's the freezer. Okay, got yeah. it, got it. <laughs> Smell, it, it keeps it kind of <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but yes, right, I'm right. in a building too and the amount of times I take it and then the chutes jam so then I don't have to worry about putting it down another chute. I just take it back, take it in the freezer until mm. hopefully it's fixed the next day. Um, Emily, I don't think we've heard, I think... Uh, don't know that I've heard from you yet on this one. Yeah, I, I was thinking that I might get uh, one of those community supported agriculture boxes, those CSA boxes. Do you guys know them? Mm -hmm. So you can basically get, yeah, like a farm or, or somewhere. It doesn't have to be a farm. My parents do a good food box. Yeah. And I think that it's a mix of local and um, like regular grocery store, but it's there's no packaging basically at all. And you kind of get what you get. And then there's the challenge of using what you get. So I think that's another kind of way to continue the challenge. Yeah. 
Um, and as someone that lives alone, it's nice to, that I can control that and, and uh, gro grocery shopping less. Yeah. Well, it's been a pleasure speaking with the three of you. I know we've been planning this event, but now actually hearing um, some of your deeper thoughts on things has been nice to, nice to hear your own uh, individual perspectives. And I hope that others consider doing the simple act of a home waste audit, even if it's just a week. Um, or a few days, and if you don't want to do the full four weeks, but you just want to um, get into the practice of uh, sharing your waste um, um, behaviors, I, I just wanted to leave up some of our information um, in case anyone wants to follow us. We do most of our posts online. Um, we're at U of T Trash Team on all um, social platforms or our website, uofttrashteam.ca, and you can learn more about how to stay in touch with our programs. So thanks so much, and back to Nadine. Thank you so much, Susan, and thank you so much to Chelsea, Zoe, and uh, Emily. Really appreciate your time and your insights about home waste audit and all your tips on uh, home waste and how to reduce your home waste. I think that was really great. Um, thanks everyone for attending and um, so happy to have you here. I think we're gonna end it um, so much. Thank you so much, everyone. It's really lovely to have everyone here and to have these conversations.